Well, welcome back to Terra Farmercraft. We've made it to episode six. And uh, the other uh, landmark that we've crossed here is that I now have 40 viewers and that, that, that calls for a celebration. So let's see here. Uh, woohoo, woohoo. Okay, calm down my knife. All right, um, one of the things I love about Terra Firmacraft is that there's so many things to do. But that also means that some days, like today, I get kind of into decision lock trying to think of what to do next. So, I actually spent 15 minutes sitting around just staring at the screen trying to think of what was next on my to-do list. And what I think it will be is a charcoal pit. Since that's going to be essential to things we do next. So, there are a lot of different ways of building a charcoal pit. I'm going to show you mine. The one I prefer. I want to go in one more. Okay. Alright. Now, to make a charcoal pit, basically have to have a wooden fire, just the standard sort of campfire that we've had before, and it has to be surrounded on all sides except the bottom by a log pile. Okay, uh, and then you cover the whole thing over with dirt or stone or something like that. And I prefer stone because it doesn't cave in on me when I'm trying to put it on. <clears throat> okay, and believe it or not, this is where I'm going to do it. But the thing is, of course, you need lots and lots of wood. So I'll go and collect that wood off of camera. Um, which means I'll uh, be back very shortly. Okay, well that took a while. I also was collecting up using the scythe to collect up some branches while I was out there since they're going to come in handy as well. Much to my surprise, I was able to work straight through most of the night. And it was only at the very end, just as dawn was arriving, that a zombie showed up to disturb me. And so I just walked away from him and we went our separate ways. Him to hopefully a flamey death and me on to uh, provide you folks with more entertainment. All right. So I have lots of wood here and I'm going to need almost all of it for this. So you got to have log piles. Actually, let me do it this way first. Okay, so the bare minimum you would need is you could put, well, <laughs> exactly where I didn't want it, is you could just put like a single log in each log pile build a fire pit in the middle and then put one more uh, single log log pile on top of that and that would be that would work as a charcoal pit if you want to and you could fill in you'd have to fill in all around here it has to be covered up so you'd have to fill in with dirt or stone all these empty areas here however the the formation of the charcoal pit it's going to burn all this stuff and form charcoal well, it actually uses up some of the wood in the process so if all of these log piles just contain a single log that's not going to be that's not going to leave you with very much charcoal I mean even if even if there was no loss you're not going to end up with a lot of charcoal so just in terms of efficiency it pays to fill these up as much as you can and so that's what I tend to do is I just fill them all up and I also pack them in more than just on the sides because the when the fire burns it'll you know burn out to any adjacent log piles as well so, whoops. So let's just fill this in here. And note that in Terra Firmacraft, you can't put a log pile on top of another one unless the one underneath is full. So that would be another reason to at least fill in the bottom layer. Now, like I'm saying, you can make these a lot bigger if you want to. And people make make them huge. I, I don't know if there's a limit anymore. There used to be a limit, but that limit was pretty big anyway. Um, but as you see, it just took me pretty much an entire day and night just to collect this wood. So I usually just like to, you know, 
create a relatively, what is a relatively small fire pit. <laughs> and get that going. And then if I need to, if I want more, I'll build a second fire pit and collect wood while this one's running. Okay. Now we are going to need some sticks. A fire starter. One more set of logs and some dirt. Okay, so we create a fire pit down here in the usual way. Toss in three sticks. Hit it with a fire starter. And then we want to get out of the way because it'll start going up in flames if I'm not fast enough. I'll show you what I mean. If I'm a little slow putting the dirt on top to finish it off, see? That fire comes out and it can burn you. So that's what I do is now I have like this solid mass of logs in there surrounding that fire pit and then it's all capped off. It's all surrounded on all sides by either dirt or uh, stone. And that's actually going to take 19 hours before it produces any, uh, before it's done. So which means uh, it's like hour 11. So that's going to take us to hour 30, which means it'll be 6 a.m. tomorrow before we see any charcoal out of that. Okay. All right, what's next on our hit parade here? Uh, we do eventually want to get some sheep. And that was part of the reason why I collected up all these sticks. So, uh, that should be enough for now. Oh yeah, I need some need a plank block or two. There we go. Get a gate. <clears throat> so let's go build a pen for let's go build a pen for our sheep. Um, do I need room? walk between these two pens? I don't think so. So we can just make the sheep pen an addition onto here. Oh, let's give the sheep are bigger, so let's give them more room. And also they, they're going to be chewing up the grass more, so they need to have room for it. There we go. Okay, we've got a sheep pen ready, and I'm just going to put a nice, easy way to get them in as well. All right. So the next thing would be to f go find some sheep. It's probably too late in the day for that. Um, I guess a couple of things to note. So like I said, it took a really long time for me to collect up all those trees for the charcoal pit. And that's because the trees I have around here are all relatively small. I mean, these ash trees here, occasionally I'll get one with a lot of wood in it like this. And I wish I'd seen this guy last night. Um, but for the most part, these trees, I don't know, maybe have like six or seven blocks of wood in them. Logs, that is. Um, there are trees that are bigger, obviously. There's In the game, there's sequoia, which are huge. And uh, what are the jungle one's called. I don't remember the names of the jungle ones at the moment. Kapok. Kapok trees. And they're also huge. So you cut down one of those and you get a lot of wood. Um, but the Kapok trees are only found in the jungle and the uh, the redwoods, the sequoia, are only found in certain biomes as well. What's really nice though are willow trees. Willow trees have a lot of wood in them. Uh, not nearly as much as a sequoia as a, or a Kapok, but you know, easily the average willow has two to three times as much wood as say one of these birch in it and willows grow fast so you can it's nice you can build if you can build a willow farm and that's what we eventually want to do we want to find some willow clear all these freaking trees out of here these garbage trees out of here and replant with willow so we have a nice fast growing source of wood and also won't take as long to harvest since they're bigger trees so that's what we want to do there now in terms of sheep sheep can be found in mountains so let's just do a very quick look here just to see if we get lucky and find some sheep on our doorstep. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? 
Have a look up here. Hello, sheepsies. Any of you around? I won't kill you. I'll give you a nice pen, safe from wolves. Nice grass to chew on. I'll feed you wheats or whatever it is that you like so you can have sex. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. I uh, don't hear any. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get up there. What time is it? Yeah, too late for today. So, take a look at that tomorrow. Ouch. Alright, what else can we do here? Oh yeah, that's the other thing that I'd forgotten about. I don't know if I've seen any deer yet. Wandering around here. But I'd completely forgotten you can get hide off of deer. And with hide we can make leather so we can start making ourselves some leather armor. So I'll have to keep an eye out for deer. And if I see any of those, chase them down. Alright, well night is falling. I think the other thing I'll do is um, I'll run around and collect up some more uh, thatch and just finish off this temporary roof. Give me something to do for the evening that's easily interruptible. So I'm going to call it a night here and I'll see you again in the morning. Well, here's something else I thought I would show you. Uh, we can put a log on the ground. Uh, it doesn't have to be a log. It could be a stone block as well. When I have logs handy. I need a knife. There's a knife. And another log. Okay. So if you put a knife with a log, you can make four wooden bowls. And if you have wooden bowls in your inventory, I don't they don't need to be in your uh, hotbar. And you click on top of a solid block, uh, stone and like I say, wooden blocks work. I don't think dirt does or thatch, but you click up here and you can see now the bowls are floating here. It's created a meal preparation, a table, I guess, but a meal preparation surface. Now what you can do with those, do I have enough now? I think I do. I have enough stuff. Three, oh yeah, I have the bread. Hopefully I don't have to use the bread. Anyway, so you can put, you can create a meal out of three or four different items. So let's see if I can use these to create a meal. Nope, needs a fourth item. So let's put the bread in there. There, oh, okay. Uh, it was lucky. All right, so what happens is you can put, put a bunch of items in here and it'll create this thing called a meal. Now if I hover over that, ignore the jump boost, that's a special effect. Uh, you see, it has a certain amount of energy. I actually don't really understand how energy affects things in the game. But filling tells you basically how many of the bars on your uh, on your uh, hunger bar it'll fill when you eat it. Okay. Now, some recipes that you get will give you special effects, and this one is a jump boost. So I got lucky right off the bat. I, I tend to I don't know if it's actually in the code or if I just get lucky, but it seems that when I include bread, I'm more. I, I seem to be a lot luckier at getting the special effects ones. So there are things you can get. You can get night vision, you can get haste, uh, you can get um, uh, speed, like to, to move, move more quickly and things like that. Now, so as you can see, it only fills up two bars, which is kind of sucky when you consider that the bread itself fills up like one and three quarter bars, and then each of these guys is maybe, you know, half a bar, something like that. So it seems like a loss, except come over here. Oh, let's get some food first. Take back that fire starter. Put the meal up there. Put in some peat. Start our cooking fire. Now if we watch this guy, he's cold right now. Boom. Look at the filling on him now. And also it, the power goes up. The power is only there when you have a special effect, so it tells you like how much the special effect is, and so it's power one. So when the meal gets hot, you don't want it to get very hot or it'll boil away, but when the meal gets hot, it's much more effective at filling you. And I just realized I don't really need that much food <laughs> right now, but I'm going to waste it. Just so we can see what the uh, jump boost does. Okay. Woo! 
Okay. Oh yeah, so I can like jump one block higher, I guess. So in theory I can jump up on top of the wall from here. No, doesn't seem to be. Oh, it's probably because, yeah, the power of the effect is too small, so I'm probably only jumping like one and a half blocks, so I can't get anywhere. So it's kind of a wimpy jump boost, but still, it was good because it gave me a chance to at least demonstrate how that works. So that's one way of extending your food, especially if you can, you know, once I have more veggies in, so that I can build something, build a meal completely out of veggies. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if you're allowed to build it completely of vegetables or if you have to include either bread or meat. If you have to include bread or meat, since I'm not using meat, I'll be stuck using bread. But if I can build one out of, say, four vegetables, which don't give you very much uh, when eaten by themselves, then that's a big gain is you get one of those. And, and on average, they generally tend to be filling too. Some are higher. And then you heat them up and they usually go to filling four. This, this meal went to filling five, which was even better. Uh, you can really get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of your hunger back or fill a lot of your hunger bar up that way. So I just thought I'd show you that and uh, be back uh, when it's daylight. All right, welcome back. As you can see, uh, when I was out uh, collecting all that wood, I also picked up a bunch of maple. So I decided to uh, do a bit more of our garish flooring here. I think I, I'm pretty sure I have enough here to finish the whole thing off. But while I was doing that, the sun rose and I heard the sound of s dirt crumbling, which was this falling in, which is a sign that our charcoal is ready. Oh, I should get another uh, pile of wood. Oh, I have one on me already. So this black stuff here is charcoal, and it's kind of interesting the way it works. Be able to see it better once we get inside. But it's sort of, it's laid down in layers, so there's up to eight layers of charcoal in a single block. So you can see that better here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that was a full block of charcoal, but they can be partial. Uh, they don't need to fill up all the way. So you can see that in each of these areas I had two full stacks of logs. And they each, even though they were all full stacks of logs, they produced varying amounts of charcoal from them. So, so you dig it up with a shovel. And charcoal is essential for a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you're at all familiar with, with real-life metallurgy, uh, when they were smelting iron, uh, they had to use charcoal. You couldn't use like just coal or wood, because it isn't just a matter of heating up, heating up the ore and getting the metal out, like getting the metal to melt out. The metal is actually bound up chemically in oxides, so you need to mix into it something that likes that'll bind to the oxygen even more than the iron does. So pure carbon is great for that. It'll bind much more readily to the oxygen than the uh, iron will. So it'll, if you, once you get things heated up enough, it'll suck the oxygen out of the uh, iron oxide, or rust as we call it, and create carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So as well as creating the heat, the charcoal also uh, acts as a reducing agent to take the oxygen out of the mix. Whereas regular coal, even though as you'll see eventually, is a lot easier to come by. We just haven't done a lot of mining yet, which is why we haven't seen it. <coughs> regular coal is, uh, has a lot of impurities in it, so they couldn't use that. Because what would happen is the oxygen would just combine with the impurities and some of the iron would. So, so for smelting we need charcoal. Um, and we also need it for another thing. Just trying to figure out where I want to put it. Yeah. I'm probably going to have to cut out the video for a bit while I reorganize things a little bit to give me a space. I'm going to make a forge, so I'll be back. 
Okay, I've picked my area and I also had to go and get some more smooth stone so I can do it. So the way you make a forge is it's basically a campfire which is surrounded on, on five sides, all sides except the top, by some kind of stone. So there's one of our sides there. That's two, three, four, and oh, whoops. Yeah, didn't actually need to take those out. Let's put those two back. All right, there's the smooth stone. So that's underneath it, and those are the other three sides. So that'll be the forge. Now, forge also needs a chimney. It needs a it needs basically a path up to the sky to vent. Now I could just leave this open here, but then we're going to run into the problem where uh, if it rains, the rain will come down into the forge and put out the fire. So what we can do though is give it a chimney back here. And I don't want this to happen. That. Yeah, that'll do. So that'll be the chimney for our forge. I've got to tidy it up a bit outside. Uh, well, actually, that's not so bad. I can just do that from top. top. Good. Do, 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 do. My handy thatch stairway. Ah, uh, yes. Put that up. And I really need to run planks around that to keep the spiders out. But for now, just leave it while I demonstrate how the forge works. Okay, so that's the forge. Uh, now, I said you put a campfire in here. That was actually inaccurate. You don't, because you don't use sticks. You have to use charcoal. So you put, you fill this up with a block of charcoal. So that's eight layers of charcoal. There we go. And then use a fire starter on it. Uh, fire starter's over here. And there's the interface for the forge. Now let's put a bit of charcoal in here. So you can, you have spaces down here which is for the fuel. Uh, burn charcoal, I think it'll burn wood. Maybe not. Nope. No, so it'll burn charcoal, it'll burn coal. I don't think it'll burn peat either, will it? No. So charcoal or coal. And the advantage in these slots up here are for things that you want to heat up. So the advantage over our fire pit over here is we can only do one thing at a time. And it's slow and it's tedious. With the forge, if I, for example, want to make torches, I can make f five sets at a time. Boom. And this is just a little bug in the forge that every now and then, even though it's done, it doesn't show up. No idea what caused that. Now, I don't need to have all these in here uh, for fuel. In fact, it's already burning, so you just have to have some fuel in there for when it starts to run out, otherwise the temperature will, dr will, down, will drop down. So I can, like, make more torches here. Boom. And seeing very quickly to that, obviously, same thing if I want to heat food, heat food up or uh, cook bread or whatever, I could do five loaves of bread at once instead of one. The other thing is a forge gets a lot hotter. Um, so this spot down here, do I have anything I can stick in there? No. Uh, oh, I can stick a stick. This spot there, that's the hottest part of the forge. And as you go up the sides here, it gets cooler. And the other thing that affects it is how much charcoal you have in here. So the more charcoal you have in here, the hotter the, particularly the upper tiers will be, because it's sort of assumed that all that charcoal is burning at the same time. Now you can't smelt ores into metals in the forge, but you can use it if you've already smelted some ore into a metal. You can, you know, the temperatures in here get high enough that you can you can melt it down. Uh, to melt down some, like if you have say, oh. 
uh, if you have, say, a mold that has some solidified metal in it and you want to get it liquefied again so you can do something with it or heat it up to work on, you can throw it in the forge and heat it up. Uh, when we get to iron and things like that, the forge by itself doesn't get quite hot enough, but we can add a bellows to it to make it hotter. So there's the forge as we slowly improve our living conditions. And I think tomorrow I want to go climb these mountains and look for sheep. So I'll, uh, I'll bid you adieu for the night and see you tomorrow morning. Well, welcome back. Um, as you can see during the interim, I uh, did some, made some renovations inside the house. I finished laying down the garish flooring and I finished off the, as it turns out, somewhat somber uh, temporary roof. So I have to move that higher on the list to get something a little more cheerful and a little bit airier up there. Um, reorganize some of the chests now. So this is the dirt chest, this is the rock chest, this is the interesting stuff chest. And over here is all the stuff related to uh, food and cooking food. It seemed to make sense since the cooking fire is here and the quern and the food preparation area. And this is sort of like vaguely things that are related to smithing and that, but the forge only gets used sort of in a related capacity. So it's just sitting over there now until other things become clear. And I got some wood stacked up. Now the plan was for today, you can see today's almost over, um, I was going to go up into the mountains here and go looking for sheep, but there's not much time left in this episode and climbing up and down mountains can take a bunch of time. So I really think I want to devote like, you know, most of an episode to it when we have a lot more time to get into it. So today, the one thing I thought I'd just finish off with, with what we have here, is uh, showing you some of the tanning process. Now, we don't have any hides yet to tan, but I can, uh, there's some prep work we have to do anyway, so we might as well get that done right now. So first, let's grab ourselves a few logs. Actually, I want these, I think. And take our saw. So the first thing we need to do is make a few barrels. Uh... Is that going to be enough? Yeah, that'll be enough. Well, actually, no. Barrels are made that way, right? Yeah. So I need one more. We need three barrels. And it's handy to put them over by a permanent water source. Well, actually, maybe I should stack them up. Yeah, actually, that'll leave me with more room. Why don't I do that? Stack them up. There we go. Even better. There we go. We can access all three barrels. I'll get to how the barrels work in a moment. Okay, the next thing... Do I have some on me? Yeah. Uh, during the wanderings around... I don't remember exactly where we found. I think it's over toward the mine. Yeah, in fact, it was over toward the mine. We found some of this marble rock. And it's nice because it's a flux stone. And by which I mean that if we put it in the crafting area with a hammer, we can make flux out of it. So there are four different types of flux stone. There's marble, limestone, dolomite. And I don't have to remember what the fourth one is off the top of my head. And... In addition to that, there's one of the minerals, I think is borax. Uh, it can also be used to produce flux. And borax actually produces four uh, per mineral, whereas all these other rocks only produce two. But usually it's so easy to find. A, often, I should say, it's, it's much easier just to find flux rocks and make those. So borax isn't that big a deal. Um, uh, where do I want to go with this? Oh, yes. Uh, so what we can do with the flux is if we put some flux into a bucket of water we get a bucket of lime water Oops. and so this first guy here this first barrel we want to fill up with lime water oops need to drink myself So it'll take uh, up to eight buckets of lime water. Somewhat tedious process, but...
Oops. So maybe I'll skip ahead in editing. We'll see. There we go, that's our lime water. So the lime water is used, um, when you get a new hide, you throw it in the lime water and the lime water is used to uh, basically eat away at you know, the scraps of flesh and stuff that's left in there and soften the hide and break some of the, uh, the, some of the bonds to make the hide a bit more pliable. In the second one, second barrel we just put in a bunch of water don't do anything special to it and that'll be used to basically rinse the alkali out of the hide after it's been soaking in the lime water there we go oops there we go and this last guy we initially fill up with water as well now you can see why it's nice to put this beside a permanent water source because you need a lot of water. <laughs> oh, he's already full. Okay. And once he's. That is the top one, right? Yeah. And he's full. Okay. So once he's full of water, we put a log, it doesn't matter what type of tree, just put one log in there and seal it in. And now if we try and open it, we can't open it. And what the log's going to do is the tannins in the log are going to uh, seep out into the water to form, well, it'll just call itself tannin, but it's tannin water. And then that'll be for the final stage of actually tanning the hide. So uh, if we run into a deer or if our... Uh, well, our pregnant sow is going to have a litter, and then it'll take a while for them to grow up. So odds are we'll run into a deer before that, and that'll be our first source of hide. But uh, then we can take that through the process, and you can see how we get leather. So that's it for now, and I guess I will see you again. I hope to see you again for episode uh, 7. So thanks for joining me. Bye.